So, what's going on guys? Chris here once again to go over another weapon battlefield hardline. And in this one, I'm going to be putting a Betrayal DLC gun, the M1903, under the spotlight. Now, the M1903, aka the M1903 Springfield, is an American bolt-action rifle which, believe it or not, was adopted by the US military in 1903. So it's a bit of an old gun, and it's been around for a while. The Springfield even made it into World War I, which was a standard infantry rifle though it was later replaced by the M1 Garand. Though it came back in World War II, as there wasn't enough M1 rifles to arm all of the US troops, and so it remained in the service as an effective sniper rifle in World War II, plus it was also used in the Korean War, the Cuban Revolution, and even the early stages of the Vietnam War. These days though, the M1903 Springfield is a fairly popular civilian firearm in the States, and a collector's piece being the important historical weapon that it is. In the Battlefield games though, being such an old weapon, it's not really been all that relevant in recent games like Battlefields 3 and 4, as they've featured a much more modern arsenal. In fact, the last time you saw it was probably in the 2009 title Battlefield 1943, which was centred around World War II events. Being absent from the franchise for a while obviously sparked some interest in how the gun will turn out in Hardline, and so this is where I come in to fill a few gaps. So, the M1903 is indeed a bolt-action sniper rifle, However, untraditionally, the gun can be used on all kits, not just on a professional loadout. It's also not limited to the cops or the crooks either, meaning it can be added to pretty much any clash you want it to be. Plus, the M1903 is fairly cheap too, costing a price of just $25,500. So it's a fairly accessible weapon to use if you fancy giving it a blast. But with all these fancy new modern guns thrown all over the place in Hardline, is the M1903 Springfield worth picking up? Well, to point out what the gun does well first, the Springfield's got a fairly high bullet velocity of 640 meters per second, which is always a good thing, especially for sniper rifles, as it means there's going to be less bullet travel time, and so your shot will reach its destination, i.e. an enemy, without having to lead your sights in front of them as much first. The muzzle velocity here is actually the same as the Scout Elite, so if you find that gun an easy one to trace targets with, it shouldn't feel a hell of a lot different. Another thing that the gun has over some of the other bolt action snipers is a low recoil pattern. With a vertical kick of 0.3 and a horizontal kick of 0, the M1903 is only going to jump upwards a little bit after every shot, which should allow you to get back on your target a tad quicker than perhaps another sniper with a more violent recoil pattern. And to help you out even further, the Springfield also has a built-in straight pull bolt too, even though it doesn't tell you that in the attachments, so you'll be able to stay scoped after every shot straight from the get-go. But it's not all good news, and this is the part where I highlight some of the crappier factors of the weapon. Probably the biggest negative that the gun has is its low damage rate, with a maximum damage of 45 up to 20 meters, and a minimum damage of 34 past the range of 90 meters where that drop off ends, the M1903 has got one of the lowest damage readings of all the bolt action rifles. With the lowest maximum damage of any bolt action rifle in the game, this means that it's going to take a total of 3 bullets to kill an enemy with full health, if it's not a headshot. And for a bar action sniper, three bullets is a lot of bloody bullets, as normally it only takes two at maximum to drop a target. Another problem with the Springfield is the fact that it can only hold five bullets at any given time, four in the mag and one in the chamber, and with the gun possibly requiring up to three bullets to kill a target, this means that you might only be able to kill one enemy per magazine, and that's providing you don't miss too many of your shots in the process. Though its reload time is fairly quick, matching the Scout Elite, so it's not going to take too long to get back into the action once again. Now, as far as attachments go, there's not really many options here, as all you've got to pick from is a 6x scope and a suppressor. The 6x scope is going to give you a more accurate reading on your target, and help with landing those headshots a little bit easier, so I definitely suggest adding that on there. Though the suppressor on the other hand is only going to lower that bullet velocity down to around 340 meters per second, instead of 640 and this is going to make hitting your target a tougher challenge. With the gun needing up to 3 successful shots to drop an enemy, having your bullets land where they need to is really important, and taking away that speedy muzzle velocity is only going to cause problems, especially as that high muzzle velocity is one of the best things about the weapon. So yeah, I probably wouldn't go for the suppressor for this one. Anyway, in conclusion, the M1903 Springfield is quite versatile, being able to be equipped on any kit for any faction, it's got a built-in straight pull bolt, high bullet velocity, and low recoil. Probably the most similar weapon to the M1903 is the Scout Elite, as it's got a lot of similar factors. But the Scout Elite has 11 bullets per mag, and the ability to kill in just 2 bullets at closer ranges. So in comparison, the M1903 comes across as a bit weak. 
the Scout Elite almost wipes the floor with the Springfield and beats it outright with most of its statistics, from bullet damage, fire rate, magazine size and recoil, with the Springfield only having a slightly longer range drop off. It's a shame that the M1903 doesn't really bring anything better to the table. I'm not saying that the gun's terrible, and it's definitely capable of killing efficiently, but there really isn't much of a reason to dash to the M1903. There's barely any customization options for the weapon, and it's outclassed by other guns in its category. And you're probably better off just sticking with the Scout Elite, as it's generally a much better, but similar rifle. So that's just about it for this one guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, give me a thumbs up on your way out, and subscribe to see loads of other weapon guides, reviews, and a bunch of other stuff for Battlefield and loads of other games too. Take it easy, and I'll see you in that next one.